this is Vitual the Chess Noob, learning and having fun with chess. Recently, I encountered for the first time the Goering Gambit in the Scotch game. Now this is a rather winning gambit for white. This video will cover the gambit itself, and then we'll have a look at what happened in the actual game. So the Goering Gambit comes out of the Scotch games. So I'm going to look at this game from the perspective of white first. So Scotch game, of course, is e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6, and then the immediate d4, striking in the centre. Uh, commonly, uh, and most commonly in fact, black will of course take the pawn. And then the Goering Gambit is the immediate c3. So somewhat similar to the Danish. Now here, the logic behind this gambit is that black will often take. And uh, if they do that, you now have the opportunity to play the uh, double pawn sacrifice line, which is, you know, uh, which is trading your pawn for rapid development. Uh, if they take again, now you develop the other bishop, opponent has only one developed knight, you've given up uh, two pawns, but now you've got your two bishops staring at black's king side. The queen is, you know, has the opportunity to potentially uh, come out as well, and things are looking um, very, very good for white. Like there's lots of attacking chances, even though you've lost material. So this is the idea behind the Goering Gambit. And when we look at lower rated games of uh, Rapid and Blitz in the Lee Chess Community Database, it's actually a very effective line. Uh, white, I think, wins, uh, let's have a look, wins 58% uh, uh, compared to black 39%. So this is potentially a very, very good line for white. Now, I'm going to look at this now from the perspective of black, because I play black. So what can we do here? So we can take, of course, uh, though then you know it becomes a potentially tricky game. And even though black is objectively better, white has very good winning chances. The best response, according to Lee Chess, is to play the immediate D. Five. And, and in fact, this is the only response in lower rated games where black actually has a win advantage. Now, what might happen after this? So something like this, take, 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 uh, you know, develop, uh, develop, develop, develop. And basically black ends up with a very good position in the opening. And basically chess continues. So, so definitely no, no killer blow, uh, but black is completely okay in this position. And that probably is the best response to the Goering Gambit. Now, in this game, what did I end up doing? I ended up, oh no, go further back. Here we go. I ended up developing my other knight. I, I decided not to accept the gambit. I thought this kind of looked like the Danish gambit and I didn't really didn't really know how to play against it, so I decided to develop the other knight. And apparently this is completely fine in the evaluation. It's zero, zero, zero. However, this is a tricky position and I almost immediately play inaccurately. I decide to bring out my queen. Uh, I was thinking look, look, I could potentially pin and that unfortunately doesn't work very well. So they capture, now they've got two pawns in the center, which is potentially very good. I take uh, and this is a blunder, almost plus five now because they can take back and you know, now I've got, uh, they've got a lot of pressure. So with the queen, uh, with the queen out and I've kind of have nothing. So I strike with the pawn. What are they going to do? They bring the queen all the way back, uh, push the pawn. And of course that, uh, that uh, potentially does cause a, you know, create a certain tension and a problem. Here I decide to bring out my bishop and pin, um, seeing whether I can create some complications. They sort of unpin by developing their own bishop. Uh, here I decide to take. Uh, they take now, uh, you know, with an attack on the queen. But here I decided to take this way because that forces a check, captures, captures, 
now the king loses the right to castle and I take back and here I thought I had compensation. So I'm one point of material down, um, the opponent lost the right to castle well, with the king sort of move forward, potentially you know I could still castle on this side you know even though it's a little bit suboptimal. I thought maybe I was okay. Um, Stockfish however doesn't agree, uh, gives it almost a plus six to white. So in this game I thought I was doing okay here still but um, yeah Stockfish disagrees. However I was still playing as if you know I wasn't too uh, too badly uh, affected by the opening. That makes sense you know centralizing a rook, uh, I should get my king out of there uh, with a um, uh, with long castles, and of course the problem here is that you know I could potentially end up getting pinned. Uh, they move the king out of the way, so almost like manually uh, doing castling. I just bring my rook to the G file, looking at that pawn potentially develop, and here you know I'm just trying to potentially develop. I decide to move sort of my king off the back rank to give an extra defender, you know because you know there's two pieces now looking at that d6 square. Uh, knight jumps forward, forward, uh, yep lose a pawn, here I sort of had to think, yep slide the rook back, you know here I really am sort of scrambling to defend against white. Rook forward, you know and I said look can I, uh, maybe I can just trade a bishop, get rid of uh, a little bit of the tension, captures you know, with an attack on the knight, knight jumps, push the pawn, they've doubled up the battery, so that's a very very good uh, plan because now there's three attackers there, push the pawn with an extra defender, knights are so tricky I find sort of in the middle game, and here I know that I'm in some trouble. That comes with check, uh, and basically my opponent with the white pieces, very very good play, managed to uh, force basically a tr um, to trade one of my rooks for their knight. So I take, they take back, and here uh, basically I'm a, a full piece down. So one of the things out of the opening was that I end up with more pawns. I have a pawn majority, but they have an extra piece, and now it's two rooks versus one rook. It's not good for me. It's pretty tricky. You know, stockfish plus eight. However, one of the things with rook and pawn end games is that uh, is that they're almost practically like a different game. So with perfect play, white is completely winning. But rook and pawn end games are not easy. And sometimes the one misplaced move or one mistake allows the opponent to get right back in the game. So the difference between winning, draw and losing can just be a single move. So I play on. Push a pawn, you know, if I could do anything, if I can get anything, I need to probably promote one of my pawns. And given I've got the pawn majority, uh, that's where my advantage lies. So defend, uh, now they push, uh, so that pawn I probably just have to give up. There we go, I take their pawn back. Uh, you know, doubled up, so very very good. But here I thought, you know, maybe I'll give a check, um, put an extra defender now, so again I'm okay again, they take, that's alright. I obviously do not want to trade rooks, uh, if I trade rooks it'll be rook, uh, be one rook versus pawns only, basically I've got no winning chances. So here they start to push their pawns. Check, forward, I take the pawn. They push forward, I bring my uh, bring my knight. So here they opted to keep trying to push this pawn, and obviously they've now uh, disconnected these rooks. I thought, okay, this is still probably good for white, but if I have the opportunity, absolutely should take it. I knew that was going to be a discovered uh, discovered check, but that's fine, you know. And I thought here, if I had any chances left, because I still have the pawn majority, but obviously they've got this powerful passed pawn, I need to be able to block that passed pawn. If I'm able to achieve that, potentially I might not just be drawing, I might be winning. My opponent now makes the wrong move. Rook and pawn end games, so tricky, you can see the blunder. Um, now here it says plus 51, anytime you know Stockfish gives that it just means they can't find the checkmate yet, but when I've analyzed it at deeper, uh, at higher depth, I think yeah it was a, a mate in 18, so completely winning. However 
they needed to defend that pawn first. They needed to play that first. What that, what that might have looked like is this, and here I can attack both, but I'm not fast enough because they can push, I can take, and then they queen and I lose, basically. So that's what they had to do. They had to sacrifice the other rook to promote their pawn. However, the way they played by pushing the pawn first, I am now fast enough because king attacking the pawn, there's nothing they can really do about this. They have to defend, and by defending, I can now block the promotion square by putting my king on the g8 square. And one of the things is rook and pawn alone cannot get past the king for promotion. So they'll have to either bring this pawn into the picture or bring their king down. But I now have the advantage of speed. So they took my pawn, that's fine. I decided to check uh, and I thought that they were going to try to defend that pawn, which was a mistake because now rook down to this square, I am going to take, potentially invite a trade, and after that, you know, I've got three connected pawns, uh, basically uh, the C pawn is past pawn versus one, with that pawn majority I should be able to win. So not fast enough, I take, we trade rooks, and if we look at stockfish, yep, minus 10, I'm completely winning. Uh, and basically now it's a matter of supporting these pawns to promote. So the pawns holding hands, marching forward together, the connected pawns are very, very powerful. Uh, and you know, this king simply cannot defend both of their remaining disconnected pawns. Uh, they try, uh, but it doesn't work. Good move, but now I can push uh, push that pawn. This is now um, a, uh, a passed pawn. Again, defended. This is now my most valuable piece. They can take, that's fine, that's gone, and basically if the king comes there it will not be fast enough to prevent promotion. So there we go, uh, and you know, king now with the two pawns, absolutely unstoppable now. I take the last pawn, and push, uh, I, uh, I sort of promote, and my opponent here opted to resign because forced move, and then that will be mate. Good game, GG. The big takeaway from this game is to practice your rook and pawn endgames. I hope you enjoyed this video, and thanks for watching.